Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look how to turn these two small PCBs into a finished module, just like this. So this video is really for absolute beginners and it's not a full tutorial, I would say, but rather a little guide on what you need, what tools you need, and also a little insight on how one assembles a Eurorack module. So this is the printed circuit board. So the best message is most of it's already done. As you see, lots of parts are already pre-soldered on the board. So all these parts you don't have to assemble yourself or even source yourself. This saves a lot of time and effort if you want to build your own module. But before we want to get into parts, let's just get rid of all this and see what tools we need. So the most important thing you want to have is a decent soldering iron. If you don't have any prior soldering experience, just try to get one of those $2 training kits and put that together and you'll be fine. Next up are some wire cutters. I believe every household should have one of these flying around somewhere. You're gonna need those to cut off any legs that are too long and would stick out of the back of the PCB otherwise. Last but not least, you're gonna need some solder. And from my experience, you don't wanna save your money there because good quality solder is essential for good joints and you're not gonna have a good time if you have like some one dollar solder. Now that we have all tools ready, let's move on to all the parts you need. This is not much, but it can be intimidating. So the question is, how do we get here? Okay, so the sourcing is basically the same for any other brand as well. So you're looking for the BOM, which stands for Bill of Materials. On my side, you'll find it on the module page where it says BOM. Just click there and it gives you the full bill of materials. This includes all the parts you need. As you see, I have an option where you can include the pre-populated uh, parts, which is not necessary because they're already on. So let's hide them. So these are all the parts you need. As you see, there's four different parts you need and First one is the potentiometer. The identifier is what's printed on the circuit board. And this is also how you know what to place where. So you have RV1, it's a potentiometer. You need a B100K value there. There's also a link where you can buy it actually. And you're gonna look for RV1 on the PCB and you're gonna put it there. Same goes for all the other parts. So these are all the jacks. These are the two LEDs you need and the single power header. Okay, so let's assume we went through the bill of materials and bought all parts. Then we should have pots, jacks, LEDs, the power header, and some knobs. The knobs are of course totally up to you what you're gonna use there. I like these silver ones, but feel free to use anything you like. Now that we have everything set up, let's continue with the assembly. Okay, let's start putting together our module. Let's start with turning on the soldering iron and we're gonna start with the power header. This is for your module to get power out of your rack. It's gonna go on the back side of the module. I'm using some tape to fix it in place before I actually put my iron down and solder it in place. There's some great soldering tutorials online, probably better than I could ever explain it. Here's the final result of the soldered power header. And yeah, let's put away the tape, which is super helpful in general, and move on to the potentiometers. As you see here, we need to snip off this little thing. This is what the wire cutters are also very useful for. Very easy, snip. And they're off. And now we need to put the potentiometers in place. 
right here, I'm checking the destination where the pods go. Obviously, you need to check that in the bomb file that I showed you earlier. And yeah, put them in the right place. Do the same thing for the jacks. As you see here, the last jack is in place. And the LEDs, where you need to pay attention to the orientation. Everything is in place. Now we can put out the front panel. Make sure all the components are looking straight up and everything fits well. And then we can secure the potentiometers with the nuts. Therefore, we need to screw them on. This way, the front panel will actually hold everything in place, also the jacks. And this way, they cannot fall out. When we're done with that, we can turn around the module and get to soldering again. For the soldering process, it's important that you don't have any cold joints. But as I mentioned, there are great tutorials online that can really show you how to do a good soldering job. Right now I'm snipping off the LED legs and now I'm putting on the, the nuts for the, for the jacks. And these can also be screwed on just by hand and hand tighten. There are also tools for it, but just as I said, doing it by hand works just fine. And the last thing that we need to do is put on the knobs. Just stick them on, push them down, and that's it basically. And as you see, last knob goes on, the module looks great, and it also looks just like the one that we saw at the beginning of the video. Here it is. If you actually want to find out more about the exact module I built here, there's another nice short YouTube video I made where I explain what the module does and what it is. Feel free to check that out. So I hope this video gave you some nice insights in your REC DIY and gives you a bit more confidence if you want to start out building any sort of DIY modules. If you liked the video, please leave a comment, let me know what you think, and yeah, share the video with your Eurorack friends and have a nice day. See ya.